Welcome to 6 in the 8. I'm Chao Wei Huang of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and of the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about aspiration thrombectomy. Our patient is a 50-year-old woman with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and coronary artery disease. She had a cabbage about 10 years ago. Uh, she has a lemma to a diag that skips to the LED, as well as a vein graft uh, uh, to the OM that skips to the right posterior descending artery. She walked into the ER with several hours of substernal chest pain. ECG showed inferior ST elevation. Uh, the STEMI team was activated. Uh, she was given aspirin, ticagrelor, and unfractionated heparin, and she was referred for emergency coronary angiography and PCI. On diagnostic angiogram, uh, you can see that the circumflex uh, is uh, completely occluded. The LED actually only has moderate disease. You don't really see much competitive flow uh, from the lima. In fact, you actually see part of the lima here filling uh, retrograde from the LED. The RCA has some disease distally. Uh, you actually don't see the RPDA here. It is occluded uh, proximally. The lima uh, is patent, uh, but uh, really only supplies the diagonal branch. Uh, the diagonal to LED segment uh, is a tretic. So the culprit for the patient's inferior STEMI uh, is this vein graft to the OM to the RPDA. You can see very clearly a highly thrombotic lesion in this very large vein graft right at the anastomosis of the vein graft uh, to the OM. So the question is, what should we do next? Uh, should we balloon this? Should we stent this? Or uh, should we perform thrombectomy to try to get the clot out? Well, the uh, short answer is no. Uh, thrombectomy in primary PCI is uh, not recommended. It can be considered, uh, however, uh, if uh, there is very high thrombus burden, um, for instance, in a very thrombotic vein graft or in a very thrombotic and ectatic vessel. But the usefulness of thrombectomy, even in these scenarios, is not well established. So what is the evidence for aspiration thrombectomy? Well, aspiration thrombectomy was uh, put on the map uh, by this trial, the TAPAS trial uh, from uh, 2008, uh, where uh, the uh, uh, authors compared uh, conventional PCI with uh, thrombus aspiration and found a decrease, a significant decrease in cardiac death uh, in the group that got uh, thrombus aspiration. Um, the TAPAS trial uh, was a single-centered uh, randomized trial uh, that enrolled uh, about 1,000 STEMI patients. Aspiration thrombectomy began to fall out of favor uh, in 2013 after the TASTE trial results came out, uh, in which uh, PCI versus uh, PCI and aspiration thrombectomy demonstrated no significant difference uh, in the cumulative risk of death. And this was a much larger trial than the TAPAS trial, uh, enrolling over 7,000 patients in multiple centers. The final verdict of aspiration thrombectomy came from the total trial, which was published in the New England Journal in 2015. In this trial, over 10,000 patients uh, were randomized to either aspiration thrombectomy or PCI alone. And in this particular study, uh, they found that there was no difference between the two arms uh, in terms of MACE. Um, and uh, surprisingly enough, there was actually an increase in stroke in the thrombectomy arm uh, within 30 days. And even looking at the different subgroups, the, the authors could not find any subgroup that actually benefited uh, from routine aspiration thrombectomy. So as a result of TACE and then the total trial, uh, aspiration thrombectomy uh, in primary PCI actually receives a class three uh, no benefit uh, recommendation. Uh, in other words, routine aspiration thrombectomy before primary PCI is not useful. Even bailout aspiration thr thrombectomy in selective cases, that only receives a class 2B uh, recommendation as the benefit is felt to not be well established. Now, if you do find yourself in a clinical situation where you think that thrombectomy might actually be useful, uh, then you've got uh, several options available to you. 
uh, if you're going to go ahead and perform aspiration thrombectomy, uh, then there are a whole a series of uh, aspiration thrombectomy catheters uh, that are available in the market, uh, some of which are shown here. Now, most of these thrombectomy catheters uh, will require six French guides, uh, although there is a version of the Pronto LP uh, that is uh, compatible with five French guides. Uh, most of these uh, catheters have uh, the thrombectomy port uh, located uh, closer towards the tip. Uh, the Pronto line actually has the thrombectomy port uh, with uh, a, a, an opening on the side of the catheter, and these could have uh, different uses uh, depending on uh, the clinical setting. There is also something called a penumbra device, uh, which is also an aspiration catheter, but that, that comes with a uh, penumbra engine uh, that provides uh, a, a higher level of suction uh, to uh, aspirate uh, the uh, more uh, the bigger uh, thrombus. Now, if the thrombus burden is particularly high, uh, you may want to consider using rheolytic thrombectomy using the Androjet system. Uh, in the Androjet system, uh, the, uh, there are uh, saline jets uh, that travel backwards at a very high speed that essentially creates a negative pressure zone and a vacuum that uh, pulls out the blood clot. Unfortunately, the data for Androjet uh, is not particularly great. Uh, in the AMI trial from 2004, there was actually a harm and mortality uh, associated with the device. Uh, jet stent, then a few years later, was more neutral, uh, was showing uh, some uh, benefit uh, for uh, ST segment uh, resolution, um, uh, but uh, no significant benefit uh, for scar size uh, reduction. Um, if you're going to do Androjet, uh, we uh, uh, typically recommend uh, placing a temporary pacer uh, prior to the procedure, uh, as patients often get uh, quite bradycardic uh, during the procedure. Uh, lastly, uh, you may consider uh, using a mechanical thrombectomy uh, devices uh, and stent retriever devices. These are mostly used uh, in uh, neuro interventions, although there have been reports of, uh, for instance, the uh, Medtronic Solitaire stent retriever system uh, being used uh, uh, off-label uh, in the coronary artery. So back to our case, uh, the question that we have is whether or not to perform thrombectomy on this patient. Now, clearly, this is a very highly thrombotic uh, lesion uh, that uh, is located in a very large vein graph. Um, the thrombus uh, sits right across uh, the anastomosis of the vein graph uh, to the obtuse marginal branch. And there was a real concern uh, that uh, there could be embolization, significant embolization of the thrombus, either down the OM or down the RPDA, uh, causing no reflow and vessel shutdown. So in the end, we actually decided to perform aspiration thrombectomy. Um, we uh, used a BMW wire and a priority one catheter and uh, perform a couple of passes uh, with the thrombectomy catheter. Again, this should be considered a non-routine bailout scenario um, in a lesion uh, with a very large thrombus and a very large uh, vein graft. After aspiration thrombectomy, we actually decided to go ahead and perform rheolytic thrombectomy with the androjet, given that the thrombus burden was so high. Now, uh, for androjet, uh, we placed a uh, transvenous pacing catheter first, uh, because a lot of these patients uh, will actually develop bradycardia during the runs of the androjet system. Uh, we also placed a filter wire, uh, embolic protection device, a distal to the area of thrombus. But again, this embolic protection device really would only protect uh, the uh, PDA and will have nothing, uh, no role in protecting uh, the uh, OM uh, from uh, thrombus embolization. This is the angiographic result after thrombectomy. Um, a lot of thrombus was actually pulled out from the thrombectomy procedure, uh, which you see here with both white and red clot. The question that we have now is whether to actually place a stent uh, in this vein graph. Now, this vein graph is uh, very large and may require uh, uh, either 5-0 drug eluding stent or uh, even a peripheral stent. Uh, there was also concern as to whether uh, stenting uh, the vein graft uh, could potentially uh, occlude uh, the, uh, the uh, obtuse marginal branch. The patient at this point uh, was free of chest pain and the ST elevation had resolved. 
in the end, we actually decided to leave this alone and to manage uh, this medically. Uh, she, uh, the patient received uh, uh, a GP2B3 inhibitor infusion uh, for an 18 hour course and a heparin infusion for 48 hours was recommended. She was also recommended to have uh, dual antiplatelet therapy uh, for up to a year. Uh, the rest of her hospital course uh, was uneventful and she was discharged home on hospital day three. So what are the take home messages? Well, number one, routine aspiration thrombectomy in STEMI is not useful. Uh, there is a class three no benefit recommendation for that. Bailout aspiration thrombectomy uh, can be considered and gets a weak class 2B recommendation. Uh, situations where one could consider it would be uh, situations where there is a high thrombus burden, such as highly thrombotic vein grafts or highly thrombotic and ectatic vessels. But however, even in those scenarios, the usefulness of aspiration thrombectomy is not well established. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel.